Hi. Um, how you doing? This is our Before You Read Chapter 1 video. There's some things I wanted you to know about. Um, first of all, Sir Walter Scott is very wordy. Um, and if you can just hang in there for the first half of the chapter, I know she's reading it to you. I know you're going to be listening to it. So hopefully it won't be as bad, but don't tune it out because you're going to want a really good picture of the lay of the land and the landscaping. And, and it's not all scenery. A lot of it is, oh my stars. Um, the man goes on and on about scenery. I spent, I don't know how much money on college courses telling me not to be wordy. And then here we go with Sir Walter Scott. Anyway, um, he's very wordy. If you feel like you're struggling with the language, the struggle is real, my friend. Let me tell you, Nana struggled herself. I don't know how many times I've read this chapter. I don't know how many times I've listened to the chapter. And I have listened and read at the same time. But that comes in handy for you, my dear sweetie, because she makes a few errors in her reading. I haven't done this for chapter two yet. Um, I don't know if I'll do it for all the chapters or not. But I really had a hard time under <laughs> getting my head wrapped around chapter one. I don't know why. Okay, so um, when, and I don't know if these are in order or not, but it's around the conversation of Girth, the swineherd, and Wamba, the jester. They are out in the scenery that he's described. And um, she says it should be, Swine fool, but she says swine fowl, like fowl ball or chicken fowl. I don't know, bird fowl. But she says swine fowl the first time, and it should be swine fool. So, if you, you know, if you know that, it may make more sense when you're hearing it, especially if you don't have the words in front of you. And it should be thy head, not my head. They're talking about, and again, it's the conversation between Girth and Wamba, and it's and both of these er errors are right around the same time, and and um, he's talking about you know you must think I'm a fool or you know I don't know anyway. Um, they're talking very freely against the authority people, you know the nobility, the Normans. are talking very freely about them, and they instead of saying. Um, it would be thy head on a thing and not my head. She, she says, she reads it my head and it should be thy head. And so you're like, because at first it makes no sense if you don't know that she's made a mistake. So those are a couple of things. Um, in, in that first part of the chapter that it's difficult to, um, it, it was difficult. You may not have had any trouble. But um, in that first part of the chapter, it's very wordy, um, great detail about scenery, but it also goes into the culture and a little bit of the politics and the background of where they are in history and why they are and all that kind of thing. Um, doesn't really give an insight to the religion of the times right there in chapter one. I think that comes more in chapter two. Um, Here's some terms that you might need to know that I wish I knew before I read. And that is gentry, and they, they're, they're the gentry, and they call them Franklins. And really, the gentry are the Saxons that are born just below nobility. Now, the Normans call them Franklins, which actually, it doesn't go, I, I can't find anything that says this. But if you know that the Normans are, which I found out, the Normans are Franklin and something else it escapes me right now. But part of their, like back in the, like in 1910, or not 1910, 910, in the, you know, in the year of our Lord, 910, um, the Normans are Franklin and something else come together. So, for the Normans to call the Saxons, which are German 
come from German ancestry, for them to call them Franklins is a slight. And I did not see that anywhere in any of my studies, but it must be so. Because it's like calling them below them. And it's like taking away their heritage. And instead of calling them a gentry, which would have been a Saxon, German class um, label, gentry, just below nobility, they call them Franklins. Which is taking away their identity and calling them something else. Which is like what Nebuchadnezzar did to Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, when he t when they t took them in as slaves, they took away their names. So it took away their heritage because each one of their names um, was a reference back to God and as to who they were. And Nebuchadnezzar took that away. So the in in an essence, the Normans are doing the same thing in this book with the Saxons by calling them Franklins instead of calling them Gentry. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? It's a big whew. Okay, so, um, and then vassalage. It's like, what the heck is a vassalage? Okay, a vassalage, a vassal is a peasant worker. And so, in in there it said, um, they call, um, Sir Walter Scott uses a phrase called state of vassalage, which is, um, it's a service paying homage to uh, faithful, faithfulness due to the feudal lord in return for protection. So basically, um, these, these people were paying homage to their feudal lords, their people like the petty, the petty kings, the small kings. They really wanted king, but they wanted to be king. Um, and so in order to, for protection, they would do work for or give them their goods or services or whatever they wanted basically in order for protection from somebody else who might have been worse. Sometimes that worked out for them and sometimes it didn't. Um, the English Council of State is another phrase that Sir Walter Scott uses. The English Council of State. And that's the King's Council of Advisors. <laughs> And then another phrase that he uses is such and so multiplied were the means of vexation and depression. Oh, oppression. Such and so, such and so multiplied were the means of vexation and oppression. Now I gotta tell you, Nana loves her a good word in vexation. Vex, vexes. Mm, that is one of my favorite words. It really is. And it means annoyed. <laughs> Are you being annoyed? Are you being troubled? And so what it means is the such, such and so multiplied were the means of vexation and oppression. What that really means is it was the barons' ability to wield their power and their unjust and cruel ways of doing things, of, of wielding their power. And so it increased the annoyance and the upsetness of, and oppression of the gentry or the Franklins. Um, let's see. So here's another one for you. Nourishing the most intermittent <laughs> invertebrate apathy. I can't even say this word. Nourishing the most invertebrate apathy, which basically is encouraging ingrained hatred. Yeah, so like I said, he was wordy. Oh, the laws of the chase, that's basically hunting. Um, and it's very interesting is because the laws of the chase said that um, all the wildlife belonged to the king. And I don't know if you, how much background you know about Ivanhoe, but essentially, um, I don't know if we need to get there yet. Anyway, all that all you need to know right now is that all the wildlife, especially the deer, usually they're, they're just really worried about the deer, belong to the king. Or the king who says he's king, but he's not really king. Um, rustics and hinds. They are the coarse, coarse country, coarse country people and farm laborers. 
So, rustic and hind. That's another phrase that you're going to get that I wish I knew. Like, what are these things before you get there? West Riding of Yorkshire. Or Yorkshire. And that is one of the historic divisions of the country, county of Yorkshire. So, it's riding west, literally, riding west of the county of Yorkshire. Malice Evil intent. So it's basically malice pre prepense is um, evil intent. You know, it's so like when you're going to go to court and they want to know if you my book just fell. If you had um, malice forethought, it means did you plan it out? Did you have evil intent when you broke law? Um, ranger of the forest that cuts the four claws off of our dogs. That's another phrase that you're going to hear in chapter one. And let me read it to you again. Ranger of the forest that cuts the four claws off our dogs. By law, the ranger, the forester, sometimes they were called, of the king that was pr protecting his deer, um, they would cut, if there was a dog running around, they would cut the four claws off down to the skin and, or into the skin. And um, the reason why Gar Girth is even talking about this is because his dog, the um, forester, caught him and cut his, his toenails off. And so he's kind of crippled, but Girth needs the dog to help wind up wind Heard his dog, heard, his, heard the swine that he's out there watching over. Um, and then Emmaus, Emmaus. Um, at first, I thought the word was Emmaus, as in Jesus was on the road to Emmaus. It's not, it's Emmaus or something like that. Not really sure how you say it. Emmaus. Um, he's the faithful swine herd of Odysseus in Homer's Odyssey. Now, all the literature people think his name and think this is a very important reference. So, I bring it to you. I don't know why. I don't know why it's important, but it seems like everybody thinks everyone should know that um, girth is a, a type of Emmaus. Emmaus? Emmaus? It's not Emmaus. <laughs> Um, Emmaus, um, he, he's a servant, he's a swine herd, but he also has, um, very good work ethic, a very good charitable ethic, and he has issues of giving more to those who have more than enough already while someone else goes hungry. So, um, he, he, he's a faithful swine herd of, of Odysseus, and I kind of read part of that, and I think you were reading it at some point in time, and so it may make all make sense to you when you get everything read, 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 read together, okay? I think that is all for before you read. Yes. That's, that's it before you read. Um, I love you, and I hope this helps. If you have any questions, send up a bat signal to, hey, Nana, <laughs> and I will do the best I can.